Over the last few years, Zod has kind of taken the TypeScript world by storm. Finally, a validator that understands both TypeScript and the data that we want to validate. There's one way to take a pile of JSON or things that someone entered in a form and validate it and make sure it is the thing that the user said it was. You can do checks for everything from the length of a string to the range of numbers to so many other crazy things. I even got Colin to add an emoji checker for me. Nuts, so cool. But there are catches. As great as Zod is, it is not the fastest thing. It also has kinda not great TypeScript performance. It also, most importantly, doesn't follow some validation standards. Colin did a deep dive on those standards, trying to comply with them, and ended up running into a handful of problems. Rather than just work through those problems and move on with life like most do, Colin wanted to improve things, but he didn't wanna just improve them for himself, he wanted to improve them for the whole ecosystem. And in doing the process, he kind of killed Zod in my opinion. Why am I saying that? Well, here's why. He introduced the standard schema reference. This is a schema reference that works for more than one library. It works with Zod, but it also works with Valleybot and Archetype, and in the future could be supported by many more things. I am so hyped to dive into the future of schemas and validation for all TypeScript devs, and I really think this is an important one to watch if you're writing TypeScript that users ever touch. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. I've been rolling my own auth more lately, and every time I do it, I just miss Clerk more. For all the projects I could possibly throw it on, Clerk has been an incredible product to use. I've never had so much fun setting up auth, and it kickstarted me into building more apps because when setting up auth was no longer this crazy process of back and forth, and now it's just a dashboard I click two buttons in, and then the code just works across all my projects, it's unbelievable. They provide all the things you need for user management from all the backend crazy stuff. More importantly, all of the components and UI. No more building your sign-in page. No more building that little icon in the corner you click on to have the drop-down menu. All of that just comes as part of Clerk. If you want to see it in production, look no further than the actual Upload Things site. Sign in, sign in with GitHub, done. Here's my actual Upload Things stuff. And this fancy little button here, all that type of stuff handled for you from Clerk. Same thing with PickThing, by the way. You click it and here you go. How cool is it that you get all of this functionality built in with almost no code? It takes literal minutes to set up, You'll never have to worry about scale again. Clerk is a real service, so it does cost money, but their free tier is insanely generous. It is up to 10,000 MAUs for free, but it's not your usual measurement of an MAU where anyone who signs in now counts. They have to come back over 24 hours after signing up for them to count. So if you have a huge surge of users that disappear, you're not gonna get a crazy bill. They have to be actual users. So if your users are paying you money, the pricing is gonna scale great. And the 25 bucks a month and then two cents for additional users, it's actually a very good deal if you've dealt with all of these things yourself in the past. I was skeptical before I tried it and I found them pretty great. Thank you, Clerk, for sponsoring. Give them a shout today at soydev.link slash Clerk. You'll see in here, we have archetype, which is one of those options in chat, already shouting out Colin. It's so cool that Colin, archetype, and the Valibot devs are all working together to make a real standard so that we can write a validator once and have it work with all these other solutions in all these other places. I've run into this recently myself because Valleybot was one of the only options that supported open auth, which I used for T3 chat. Even though I liked using Zod and I was familiar with the syntax. So now we have Zod and Valleybot in the code base because I need to use both for those different things. So having support for all of these is great. Zod is the standard. Colin put a lot of work into it. He put so much work into Zod that TRPC kind of came out of it as a result. Valleybot was a, originally a I believe it was a research project. I read it a bit about it when I was working on the open auth stuff. Yeah, the bachelor's thesis. This was his thesis project. <laughs> Implementing a modular schema library in TypeScript with a focus on bundle size and performance. Also had Mishko and Ryan Carniato both helping advise it and give supervision over it, which is nuts. What a fucking white paper. It is kind of trippy to see Mishko, the creator of Angular, and Ryan, the creator of Solid, being cited in a thesis like this, but it's so cool. Real work went into that. And Archetype somehow is even crazier. I've covered a bit of the work Archetype's done in the past, not even just like Archetype itself, but specifically trying to cover the absolute madness of the tooling and other stuff that the Archetype creators built in order to make sure the types are as performant as possible. Just for one example of the awesome things that they have done for Archetype, AT test. This is, as far as I know, the only real library for benchmarking your types. Not like benchmarking how fast the code is, but benchmarking how deep the types go. So if you have a custom type that goes deep with layers and doing a bunch of crazy inference, this will make it way easier to see how many layers down it goes. 
There's even tools to generate stats on all of the type definitions that exist in your code base and summarize performance metrics for your type definitions. It's so hard to get this info, and I am so pumped this exists. If you're working in a big code base and you just randomly have the TypeScript server failing all the time, these are the only tools that actually make it easy to identify why and fix it. It's so good that this all exists. I am pumped that the work's been put in over on the archetype side, but it was different enough that I wasn't using it. As awesome as it is, and as awesome as I knew the performance could be, it was different. And different was enough for me to not put the time in to do the definitions. Now, I don't have to think about it as much, because if I learned this one thing, the standard schema, I can use any of these libraries. And in the future, if new, better ones come out, I can switch over to those as the thing that actually fulfills these schemas, and it doesn't really matter. And if I want to do something like have the client use Valleybot, but have the back end use Zod for the deeper like confirmations and such, it's trivial to do that now. That's so, so cool. The spec was designed by all three of the people we were just talking about. Creator of Zod, creator of Valleybot, and the creator of Archetype all worked together to make sure this problem was solved for all of them, which kind of implies it's going to be solved for everyone else going forward too. You'll see a bunch of them in here. Hell, even Julius is already contributing. Of course, Julius found his way into the contributors. Why am I not surprised? Yeah. Here's what the interface looks like. Any library that implements this can now follow it. What does it actually look like for us to define things with it? Here's a string validator that follows the spec. String schema extends standard schema. Type string, message is a string. The implemented interface here, string, message, colon, string, invalid type, string schema, return type string, message, and we have a validate function that was written here to do some type of validation. If it's a string, then it just returns that. If it's not, issues colon that string. We recommend defining the standard.validate function in terms of your library's existing validation functions or methods. Ideally, implementing the spec only requires a handful of lines of code. So as I'm starting to read this, I had a realization, and it's a realization that was just confirmed by the archetype creator here in chat. This is not meant for us to use. So I was just saying, if we learn this, we can use this one thing and swap libraries whenever. You probably should just use the library of your choice. It's probably going to be easier to switch that over than it is going to be to move your actual user code and your application code over to the schema. The point of this is actually something I would consider quite a bit cooler. This schema is for library authors and framework authors. So if you're the creators of Next.js and you're adding validation to things in there, or if you're working on something like OpenAuth and you're adding validations and schemas there, you can now build using the standard schema and then easily, trivially, support all the different validators. So if you're like me and you like Zod, you don't have to install Valleybot just to support OpenAuth. You don't have three validators, depending on the opinions of the different tools or ecosystem things you're using. If the libraries you rely on use the standard, you can now connect that standard to whatever validator you choose to use. So what this is actually done is make it way easier for someone consuming a framework or a library to use any of the validators they want to without having to install multiple validators. And now I'm even more ashamed that I have two validators in my existing code base. Good things for me to fix in the near future. A bunch of things are already supporting the schema format here. Everything from T3 environment to upload thing, have to shout out our stuff, okay? TRPC as well, which is awesome because TRPC was largely built around Zod. Now you can use it with anything. And this might actually help with the TRPC TypeScript server performance issues that I and many others have run into. Tansac Form supports it. Tansac Router supports it. Hano Middleware supports it, but it's in construction. Same with Quick. OpenAuth, awesome. That means I can move OpenAuth to Zod now or move everything else to something else. Renown, there's so many things are already supporting this. Super, super cool to see. We were linked an example using Tansac Form here. So we have a schema here in Zod, in Valibot, and in Arc. And now in the form, we can swap between any of these validators and it will just work the exact same way. We don't have to pass an adapter because it's smart enough to use the schema that we pass it to infer the correct types using its internal schema validation. It can still run the validator you give it, but it knows the types and it can be correct with the type definitions very easily now. Like if I change this to have something else Nope. Any errors? Oh, no errors. I was hoping for an error here. Will I get syntax and I'm not getting any errors here at all. Yeah, I might need to fork this on stack to actually see errors. Okay, it's got to use a, a real browser. Not saying Zen isn't a real browser. Absolutely saying Firefox isn't. <laughs> cool. So now we have our different validators like we did before. If I put something else 
hi, this type error is because it's not an option in this validator. Now I put other validators, we'll get the error that that doesn't exist for any of them. That's genuinely really cool that we can just swap between validators and it will know that this doesn't exist. If I put that in here, something else, c.string. Now we don't get the error when we use this odd one. If I switch over to use archetype instead, we'll get the error again. The reason this works is because internally, Tanstack form is now using the new standard schema. So it can take any of these validators and resolve them to the standard schema. So you have one pass, one path, one way to add a schema. And as long as all of these things are compliant, you're done. This is great for people like Tanner to make things like Tanstack forms because you don't have to do all the extra work to support all these different things. You don't even need to add an adapter anymore. Previously, the pattern was you'd have to wrap the validator in some crazy adapter that was specific to the library that you were building. That's all gone. This is a huge change for library authors in particular, and the standardization is gonna make it significantly easier to support all of the different validators. And if you're building a new validation library, you now have an in too. Previously, it was really hard to justify any of these moves because if I was to move over to archetype, I might not have a binding that I need for TRPC or for React hook form or for something else. I know a lot of people who are sticking with really old solutions for doing validation. I know a lot of people who are still on Yup because it was supporting the tools they were using and moving off it is hard and scary. Seems like it's going to be a lot better in the future. Obviously, everything doesn't support the standard schema yet. I genuinely hope we're going to see that change over time. It's going to enable all TypeScript devs to take advantage of all the different standardization validation libraries without having to worry about the things they use supporting them. It's going to take some time before everything we use supports this, but honestly, enough of the things I use support it now that I might start moving off Zod. And I am so thankful that Colin enabled me to not have to rely on Zod as much anymore. It is incredibly rare to see a dev take their own project and make it so you don't have to use it anymore. <laughs> but he did it. Zod effectively killed Zod. And I am so, so thankful for Colin and the work that he did alongside these other creators here in order to make a future that is very bright for whichever method you want to use to validate going forward. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, peace nerds.